Okay, so, um, hey everyone, uh, I've been getting this question a lot from friends and a lot of people in my uh, group have asked me this. Um, the question is, can you lose your salvation? Or uh, the quite popular mantra is, once saved, always saved. True. And simple answer, yes. That's good enough for me. So I just want to make this video. Kent made a follow-up just like I told you he was going to do. Um, here's evidence of how much of a liar this man is. He, all he does is lie. He says he doesn't remember me, right? When I, If you look at the videos about uh, debating Kent or challenging him on salvation. He says he doesn't remember me. I'm going to show you proof. He knows who I am. Him and drug addict Steve who rapes. Me, I don't think he does the raping. I think he just does the infidelity stuff and the drugs and whatnot. But there's other people that physically try to beat their wives, threaten them. A den of iniquity, people. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It is filth. So here we go. Cannot possibly lose your salvation. Don't listen to the heretics teaching otherwise. I'm calling them heretics deliberately. Notice the smile. Okay. Okay, you see the thing, notice the smile. <clears throat> Cannot possibly lose your salvation. Don't listen to the heretics teaching otherwise. I'm calling them heretics deliberately. Notice the smile. Okay, okay here we go in the documentary. This is when he's getting ready to commit adultery with Mary Toko, who he's still <clears throat> married to, and he's also with his third wife, Cindy. So he's got like, he's got like this weird thing going on. Anyway, so uh, here's him talk about his teeth. And Mary doesn't have an interest, but you might if you criticize her. <laughs> you may need no, them. No, <laughs> you don't have dentures. Okay. You may need no, them. <laughs> don't I don't know what the point of this is. So this is for Kent because I now I know they watch it. Hey, all of you guys, enjoy the laughing. You have no fear of the Lord. Enjoy it. I, I don't know what the point of the teeth was, but... Yeah. So, so Kent Hovind is right. Where was that at? Otherwise, I'm calling them heretics deliberate. Cannot possibly lose your salvation. Don't you cannot? He's right. He's absolutely right. I mean, what's the issue here? You're taking issue with his teeth because he said you can't lose your salvation. This guy lies of the devil. I'm assuming he's the devil. I mean, he's lying. I don't understand this stuff here. What is this stuff here? All right, I'm calling out uh, Ken Hoven. I'd like to have a discussion with you. You can call it a debate if you'd like, and you can have it on any channel you'd like. We can have it on my channel, your channel, it doesn't matter, uh, about salvation. The reason why is because in Philippians 2.12, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. The body of Christ, we should have a discussion so that people can work out their salvation with fear and trembling. It's all right here. It's all right here in the Bible. There's nothing, uh, there's nothing extra that we need to add to it or anything like that. We can just read verses and have a Bible study, a discussion, a debate. 
whatever you'd like to call it. My number is 520-510 if you'd like, and you can have it on any channel you'd like. We can have it on my channel, your channel, it doesn't matter. Uh, about salvation. The reason why is because in Philippians 2.12, therefore my beloved... Philippians 2.12. Philippians 2.12. Did they take that out of my Bible? Oh, no, there it is. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Uh, so I'm guessing he, he's not real clear here. He's a little bit ambiguous, but I've heard people say, or I've heard, I've heard people point to this verse and say, that, see, we got to save ourselves. Philippians 2.12, work out your own salvation. This uh, clearly is not a reference to you saving yourself, because if you have to save yourself, then Christ is dead in vain. Everything Jesus did was in vain if you are saving yourself. Your salvation is because of what Jesus has done. And all Paul is saying here is work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Not meaning you're sa This does not at all <laughs> make any reference to the idea that you are saving yourselves. People will... I've seen people do it. That's why... I, I think that's what he's saying. Because that last video we saw, this guy's pointing to Kent Hovind's teeth as proof that you can lose your salvation. I mean, it, to me, it, it, I don't understand. <laughs> you know, if I had a, the opportunity to ask this guy a question, it would be, what must I do to be saved. In fact, that might be... See, this is a little bit confusing here. No, once you are saved with the Holy Spirit, we have everlasting life. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed. So it seems like he's supporting that idea that once saved, always saved, is the gospel. Good news of Jesus Christ, not by works are you saved, but by grace, unless anyone should oppose. Is this your is it your position that salvation can be lost? Oh, so he doesn't want to answer. So he's afraid. So he's, he's when he says, you have no fear of God, well, you, you know what? Uh, maybe this guy's really afraid, so afraid he's afraid to answer. I don't know who you are. This was specifically about and for Kent Hovind. However, now that you are here, do you know who Chris Jones is? Do you know who Christ Jesus is and what happened? All right, so if you want to make uh, the case that Chris Jones and Kent Hovind are sinners, I'll agree with you 100%. I think they're sinners. That's what I think. I think I'm a sinner. And I think this guy here is a sinner. And that's what I think. You said you didn't know who I am, and yet you tagged me. Therefore, you do know who I am. And I've posted 230 debates on topics, creation, evolution. What in the world is this? Soteriology. What is that? The doctrine of salvation. Why not just say... I don't like fancy words. The nature of God. I have personally debated the topic. Once saved, always saved. Numerous times, and I have... I also have a visiting scholar who specializes in... You know what? This is what... <laughs> scholars and experts. Man, I'm a scholar, and I'm an expert. I'm a doctor, and I'm a... What, you know, whatever. What's that even mean? Like, these people have special knowledge that me and you don't? No. 
If you have a Bible, you have all the special knowledge you need. I'm not interested in back and forth comment war. And so, apparently neither is he. I don't know who you are. I don't know what your name is. Where are you from? What's your social security number? What time are your kids going to be home alone? I ask Kent Hovind. I know Kent Hovind. And you, sir, are not Kent Hovind. So there's nothing there. So he's obviously he's not going to answer that question. So you know, if I had the opportunity, I'd I'd ask him. What must I do to be? Yeah, yeah let's do this one. It's a real simple question, right? Because it's all it's right there in the Bible. Alright, so anyways. Enough of that guy. So I right, really I'm just looking for uh, short videos. Short videos with uh, Very few followers. Oh yeah, that's kind of surprising, right there. I have in Lenox, Alabama. I'm leaving in about an hour for the trip to uh, Old Town, Florida, to speak the, for a couple of days this week. So I thought we'd follow up last night's Bible study we did okay. on "Once Saved, Always Saved." O S A S has really got. I, I looked at. The, I was looking at this wrong. Views. Yeah, that's a lot of views. So he's, you know, he's very popular, obviously. So what I'm looking for is short videos with uh, not many views. And people, can I sin all I want? Will sin cost me my security with Jesus? And are we? Does the law save us? Does righteousness come by the law? Well, my friend, you already do. And if you're truly saved, you sin more than you want to. Let's look at Romans 7. Ah, uh, yeah. How about Romans chapter 7 over beautiful St. Ferdinand Pond in Florissant, Missouri? Romans chapter 7, verse 1. Or do you not know, brethren, for I am speaking to those who know the law, that the law has jurisdiction over a person as long as he lives. Verse 2, For the married woman is bound by law to her husband while he is living, but if her husband dies, she is released from the law concerning the husband. Verse 3, so then if while her husband is living, she is joined to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband dies, she is free from the law, so that she is not an adulteress, though she is joined to another man. Verse 4, Therefore, my brethren, you also were made to die to the law, through the body of Christ so that you might be joined to another to him who was raised from the dead in order that we might bear fruit for God verse 5 for while we were in the flesh the sinful passions which were aroused by the law were at work in the 
members of our body to bear fruit for death. Verse 6 But now we have been released from the law, having died to that by which we were bound. So that we serve in newness of the spirit and not in oldness of the letter. Verse 7 What shall we say then? Is the law sin? May it never be. On the contrary, I would not have come to know sin except through the law. For I would not have known about coveting if the law had not said shall not covet. Verse 8 But sin, taking opportunity through the commandment, produced in me coveting of every kind. For apart from the law, sin is dead. Verse 9 I was once alive, apart from the law, but when the commandment came, sin became alive, and I died. Verse 10 And this commandment, which was to result in life, proved to result in death for me. Verse 11. For sin, taking an opportunity through the commandment, deceived me, and through it killed me. Verse 12. So then the law is holy, and the commandment is holy, and righteous, and good. Verse 13. Therefore, did that which is good become a cause of death for me? May it never be. Rather, it was sin in order that it might be shown to be sin by affecting my death through that which is good. So that through the commandment, sin would become utterly sinful. Verse 14, For we know that the law is spiritual. But I am of the flesh, sold in the bondage to sin. Verse 15. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For I am not practicing what I would like to do. But I am doing the very thing I hate. Verse 16. But if I do the very thing I do not want to do, I agree with the law, confessing that, the law is good. Verse 17. So now, no longer am I the one doing it, but sin which dwells in me. Verse 18. For I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is in my flesh. For the willing is present in me, but the doing of the good is not. Verse 19. For the good that I want I do not do, but I practice the very evil that I do not want. Verse 20, But if I am doing the very thing I do not want, I am no longer the one doing it, but sin which dwells in me. Verse 21, I find then the principle that evil is present in me, the one who wants to do good. Verse 22, for I joyfully concur with the law of God in the inner man. Verse 23. But I see a different law in the members of my body, waging war against the law of my mind, and making me a prisoner of the law of sin, which is in my members. Verse 24. Wretched man that I am, who will set me free from the body of this death? Verse 25. Thanks be to God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then on the one hand, I myself, with my mind, am serving the law of God. But on the other, with my flesh, the law of sin. Thanks for watching this 2020 Vision video. Remember, once saved, always saved. If you're truly saved in the first place. See you in the next video, everyone. Okay, so yeah, he, you know, he's got it. He gets it. The, the only thing is, 
it drives me nuts that these guys can't figure out what Bible to read from. But, uh, you know, Romans 7 is a great chapter. It really lays it all out very plainly. Um, so this guy, he gets it. I mean, he's a great speaker. He speaks real slow and clear. The only problem is he doesn't read from the right Bible. So the question is, can I sin all I want? Well, it's wrong to sin. It's whether you're saved or unsaved, it's wrong to sin. Now, the other question, will sin cost me my security with Jesus? And the obvious answer is no. It won't cost you salvation. Um, so I can't spell words. Let me see how close this is. Oh, oh my goodness. I can't spell nothing. What is that word? I gotta figure out. School. Oh, school. S C O. Oops. There's no four in scourge. All right. So, for whom the Lord loveth, He chasteneth and scourges every son whom He receives. So, very simply put, if you sin, there is consequence for that sin, but. Crying out loud. People take it too far. Unsaved people take it too far and say, well, you're going to lose your salvation. So, which begs the question, if you lose your salvation after you've gotten it, then one, you're not really saved, but then how do you regain your salvation? Right? How do you get it back after you lost it? You know, what if you've lost, what if you've gotten saved ten times and then you've lost it ten times? On the eleventh time, how did you get it back? Or how do you get it back? I mean, if believing in Jesus wasn't enough, then what must I do to stay saved? I mean, that would be a great question, right? Um, what am I looking for here? Uh, oh, I know. Oh, let's do this. No, that's not it. Hold on. There it is. That's what it was. 26. For if I sin willfully, and this is talking about sinning willfully, not accidentally, because if you accidentally cheat on your wife, that's okay. But if you do it on purpose, well, you're in trouble. Because there remains no more sacrifice for sins. That means you lost your salvation. It's okay if you accidentally sin, but if you willfully do it, well, you're in trouble. And so, uh, you know, that's what <laughs> that's what people teach. That's what they really, really teach. That's not what this is talking about at all. It's making the point that Jesus is the one-time sacrifice. His sin covers all, or I'm sorry, his blood covers all sin. All right, he was made sin for us. Just to, before somebody freaks out. Oh, I won't be able to find it. Let's go. I should have done that right there. No, okay, never mind. Forget about that. So now being made free from sin. Well, let me see if I can find it. For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. That's what it was. Okay. That's, I apologize. So anyways, when it, and here in Hebrews 10, when it's talking about there remains no more sacrifice for sins, that means Jesus is the last sacrifice, the final sacrifice, then he covers all sin. So if you're looking for another way to uh, bring offerings to God, to give sacrifices to God, there's not. 
it's already done okay so if you go out and sin after your all your sins are covered uh, you know there is no more sacrifice but only a you know a fearful looking for the judgment so in other words it's going to play on your conscience and the spirit's going to work in you and you're going to uh, you really you're going to be tormented unless you uh, admit if you will that uh, this sin is wrong and that's how the spirit works in us it convicts us it leads us away from wickedness and it alerts us to wickedness and uh, we are moved in the spirit of God uh, toward righteousness and away from wickedness and that's the Spirit of God working in us that doesn't mean uh, we're not prone to do uh, wicked things because we're still in the flesh just like we read in Romans 7 um, this is all consistent with everything that we're reading in the Bible this is not like a standalone different doctrine in the Bible where you can lose your salvation because if that's what it, w it was saying then once you know let's say you're you become saved today you've been sinning and sinning and sinning like uh, there's no tomorrow and you develop this pattern this habit of constant sin and then you realize I, I, I don't want to do this no more I want to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved and then you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you're saved but you're so used to sinning that you immediately sin again just you know two minutes after you've been saved okay now that you sinned if this is true that you'd lose your salvation and now you're done screwed to pooch because there is no more sacrifice for sins so in, a, in essence it's better to wait until you're 95 years old laying on your deathbed moments before you're about to die to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ I mean really it's how, this is how stupid these people are they do not believe that Jesus can save anybody and the only way to be saved is to uh, claim to believe in Jesus and then never sin that's an impossible standard that they do not lay up for themselves and uh, this is, I'm going to keep pointing to this. I'm going to keep going to this. I'm going to keep on keeping on. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. These hypocrites that are against once saved, always saved. They lay out a standard that they don't hold for themselves. They put it on others, but they won't do it themselves. They say, you can't sin. If you sin, you lose your salvation. Well, they sin. So by the standards that they set, they aren't saved. They lose their salvation all the time, constantly. All they're doing is pretending to be perfect and to be holy and to be righteous they're not only one is good and that is God that's Jesus Christ and so you're either trusting in Jesus Christ to save you or you're foolishly thinking that you can save yourself by being a good person and you're not a good person and you're on the fast track to hell so again let's I think of so this is what I like to do uh, quite frequently is just take a ganders at uh, these people that are preaching against uh, once saved always saved I won't you know these big channels I'll ignore these long winded videos like the ones I do I'll ignore and then the small videos that I like to look at, the small, the short videos with a uh, few subscribers. And this way, you know. Hey everybody, welcome back to Biblical Secrets. 
Well, we actually had a request to do part two of what saved always saved. In this video, we're gonna go over a few more verses that prove that what saved always saved is not biblical. It's time. Oh, look at this! Oh my goodness! What is that verse? I can't remember. Oh, I know what it is. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones? Where are we at? But whoso shall offend one of these little ones, which I, which believe in me? It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he were cast into the sea. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones so this poor fellow right here is being indoctrinated to reject the gospel of Jesus Christ and there's nothing worse than that right there it's better for whoever it is that's teaching this young fellow This is part two of Once Saved, Always Saved. Have any questions? Yeah. If so, just drop them down in the comments below and tune in next time to seek the truth. Comments turned off. I'm dead. Gee, Christmas. Gee, many Christmas. Come on, people. Yeah, just ask a question, but there's no way to ask a question. Okay, so this guy here. Oh, Reality Talk with Carter. This guy fully rejects Jesus Christ does not believe in Jesus Christ at all he believes that he can save himself good luck partner alright so that's enough until next time